When you think of a video game system, instead of thinking of it as an entertainment system, try to think of it as a system of inputs and outputs. Most video game systems include gaming controllers for inputs and then a video and audio stream for a TV or monitor and speakers as outputs. Depending upon which buttons or joystick movements the user inputs, the video game system outputs some correlating visual element on the screen along with some sound. And when you think of a video game system in these simple input and output terms, then the actual design of a video game interface becomes fairly simple. Even simple enough that with all that we've just learned, we can build a game of our own. For our game, we will use a push button interrupt as input along with the trim pot input for selecting difficulty. Then five LEDs and a seven segment display will be used to show output. The five LEDs should light up one at a time, back and forth. The goal of the game is to press the push button when the middle LED is lit up. Then the score display will increment by one. Changing the trim pot input should make the LEDs move faster back and forth, changing the difficulty of the game. Here's the complete hardware schematic for this game. It's the most complicated circuit of this course, so let's build it up part by part to make sure we know how the hardware is connected. The power supply for this circuit will be a 9 volt battery connected to a 7805 plus 5 volt regulator, which will supply plus 5 volt to our circuit. Next we connect the power supply signals to the microcontroller. The reset circuit consists of a push button and a pull-up resistor. This button will reset the game. A USB to serial converter module is used for uploading the program to the microcontroller. Here, a 16 MHz crystal with two 22 picofarad capacitors form the frequency control circuit. Next, we'll use a 4026 counter and a 7 segment display. The 4026 will drive the 7 segment display and the microcontroller will pulse the 4026 from digital pin 13, telling it to increment the score value. Digital pin 8 will connect to the reset pin of the 4026. The trim pot will be connected to power, ground, and analog pin 5. The push button interrupt for user input will connect to interrupt 1. We'll use a pull-down resistor with a capacitor to help generate a clean interrupt signal. Lastly, the five LEDs are connected to digital pins 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11. And there you have the complete hardware schematic. The software for this game is a little more complicated compared to what we've done in the past. So let's go through it line by line to make sure we understand everything that's going on. First we create the setup, loop, and interrupt service routine called winner check. We'll use five integers to keep track of which LED should be lit up. A one means it should be on, a zero means it should be off. So initially, LED zero will be on. Additionally, we'll use an integer to store the converted analog to digital value from the trim pot. Next, in the setup function, we will set up digital pins 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 13 all as outputs. And initially, all of these outputs should be low. Digital pin 8 will be pulsed to tell the 4026 to reset the score count to 0. And then we set up the interrupt at location 1 with the interrupt service routine called winner check and using a rising edge interrupt trigger. In the loop function, First we do the analog to digital conversion and divide it by 4. This yields an ADC value from 0 to 255. We use this as part of a delay. Next we'll use a while loop to shift the single LED that is on over to LED 4. This works because the while loop will continue to execute until LED 4 equals 1, meaning it is lit. The first five lines inside the while loop shift each other's values up and then the LED array is refreshed and then there is a short delay. Once the LED that is lit has shifted over to LED 4, we need to shift back to LED 0. So we use another while loop with the shifting going in the opposite direction while LED 0 is not yet lit. Again, the first five lines shift each other's values down, then the LED array is refreshed and there is a short delay. The very last step is the interrupt service routine called winner check. Inside the function winner check, we have a single if-else statement. 
if LED2 equals 1, which means the middle one is currently lit, you are a winner. So increment the score counter by pulsing digital pin 13. Otherwise, do nothing and continue the game. It's a long program, so take some time to study and understand it. Here you can see all the parts necessary for this game. The larger parts are a jumper wire kit, a components kit, and a breadboard. The specific parts from the components kit are a 7805 plus 5 volt regulator, four 100 ohm resistors, three 10 kilo ohm resistors, two 0 0.1 microfarad capacitors, two 10 microfarad capacitors, two push buttons, an AT Mega 328 microcontroller with Arduino compatible bootloader installed, a 16 megahertz crystal, six red LEDs, two 22 picofarad capacitors, a nine volt battery connector, four jumper wires, a 10 kilo ohm trim pot, a 4026 counter, a seven segment LED display, a USB to serial converter module with jumper wires, a nine volt battery and a laptop with the Arduino IDE installed on it. After gathering all the parts together, let's follow the schematic and build the circuit. Here we will show a time lapse of the part by part construction of this circuit. This is a complicated circuit, so pause the video when necessary if we go too fast. And finally, we connect the four jumper wires to the USB to serial converter module. And now connect the USB to serial converter module to your computer and power up the circuit. Then upload the program to the microcontroller. And to make it easier to see, we'll disconnect the USB to serial converter and focus in on the game. With the game up close, we'll change the difficulty a few times so you can see the variance offered by this simple game, and then we'll reset it back to the easiest level. Now we play the game by pressing the button. When the middle LED is lit, on the easiest level as you see here, it's pretty easy to score points. Resetting the program clears the score so you can start over. And there you have just built your first microcontroller game. Awesome! With any luck, watching this video and building this breadboard gaming system has altered your view on gaming machines, so that when you look at an arcade game, be it a typical joystick and buttons or even pinball machine, you can see it as a system of inputs and outputs that virtually anyone could design if they just started thinking about it in the simple terms similar to what we used to build this LED game. All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. Next time, we'll dive into what is called pulse width modulation and make some LEDs fade in and out sequentially which is a very sought-after lighting effect.